Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we are looking at the Vega copper pipe ball lightning cut. And so this is this section of copper pipe where we have a multi-aspect spherical or uh, hemispherical cut out of it. And we are going to be examining that in some detail. So I'm going to drop it into the SEM. See if we can find this cut edge here. So as we found before, typically, the most interesting areas, uh, if this is the major cut area, the most interesting areas are on the periphery. So I think we're going to look at the cut area, and I can already see it's kind of scalloped, so this is getting me quite excited. But also there's some sort of trails coming away here, and some features in here, so there's quite a lot to look at. So I think first we'll, we'll go in and have a look at the morphology here by switching over to the SED, so we get a better idea. Now, I don't know whether this is in shadow. If it is in shadow, then we've got a problem. We might have to turn the sample. Actually, at the moment, it looks well illuminated, so this is good. Might be a problem sampling up here, though, because this is not well illuminated. But we will see. This is structure up here, which looks interesting, so maybe we'll have a look at that. OK, so let's go in and see. Yeah, this looks like our scalloped. Wonderful. It's kind of basically the same thing you see wherever you see this kind of ball lightning like effect. It's this scalloping. Absolutely wonderful. Look at that. I'm going to um, go to manual focus here so that I can do a focus pull. Mm -hmm. We go a little bit down here, shifting the focus down to the top right. Okay, so that's the top right hand corner, and we're going to pull it back down towards the center. And you can see at the top end or edge of this ball lightning cut, we have this scalloping we see the same thing going on in the John Hutchison sample, in the key from the event, the same scalloping. And you can imagine these are the subsections of the skin of the ball lightning. Anyway, this is a rather special right here, so I think we're going to take a shot of that. Just whilst we're here, I think we'll measure this. What is that? We're looking at 3.68 microns. Um, and it's the width of this little scallop here, which looks like it might be 2. 7.86, there's a section taken out here, 6.37, 7, across there. 
rather special, isn't it? So we will take a nice shot of that. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, I like this sort of area. Yeah. Okay. So it's less scalloped further down. Um, we're going to crank this up. Light. So this is just on the SED sensor. So if you were to argue that this was melted, um, I think you're going to be struggling really because <laughs> I'm not sure melting would have these perfectly sort of scalloped out sections. In my view, this is not melted. This is what you see when ball lightning interacts and destroys matter. What a thing of beauty, look at it. <laughs> so the question is, in the centre of these pits, like this pit up here, and this pit down here, what are we seeing? What are the elements in there? It's copper to begin with, what are we going to see? Are we going to see maybe a lot of sulphur? Don't know, going to find out. We'll go over to the BSD because that's going to give us a better idea. All elements, because at the moment we're only obviously looking at the form. I mean, in this scallop, we've actually got something left in there. That's several of these, you've got it in there. This one, this one, this one, actually, this one over here, this one over here, this one over here. So I think we can say that this scalloping probably is the feature of a ball lining cutting through material. Let's switch this to BSD form. Mmm, okay. It's quite nice when I'm screen recording, but I can just change the, the focus point and I can actually see the focus pull through. Mm -hmm. And if necessary, I can go into Photoshop and grab a few frames and stick them together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do it that way. So this is on the edge of all lightning. And this is copper. It's not melted, it's cut away by the co coherent structure. Right, so this is an iron plate with an iron plate below, and this is a copper tube, and it's cut perfectly in two axes. Okay. And I'm looking at this edge here, mm -hmm. where this is not melted at all. And on the edge, it looks like this. Okay, I'm very interested to look in this area here. Because that seems to be quite clear, that one. So we're going to take that and we'll take a picture of where we are. And I will switch this to mix so then we can maybe have a perception of what that is and I'm going to go a little bit more SED so I can then see the form where we are And what is the size of this structure here? It's 3.59 microns. Uh, pretty much spherical, of course it would be. Um, so. Interesting. 
that wobble there. Yeah, we got a bit of wobble. So you can imagine something is scooping out these things. <laughs> And uh, in this particular aspect, it um, left something behind. It didn't completely remove it. I mean, this down here, down here, it's very, very clear with a central spot in it. I'm very excited to have a look at this. Okay, there's some wobble going on, it's unfortunate, but uh, quite close in again. Now, this is a, you can imagine that in the work of Ken shoulders, he's seen sloshing on a 2D plane. And you can imagine that these scallops, if they were just on a 2D plane, and it would look like sloshing. But here we are in a 3D section, and you're seeing what it looks like in 3D. Okay, we're going straight all the way to SED. Yeah, definitely. Look at this. Looks like we have end on on one of these features. This looks like it's in a bit of a hole, so we might be able to detect what's going on better with this one. But we will see. I'm going to make those samples a little bit quicker because uh, otherwise it's not really going to give us the bonus resolution. So it's a weird kind of level. Let's see if we can get a shot like that. Yeah, there's no point. It's wobbling, so I might as well take a line. Look at that wobble. <laughs> it's really wobbling. Is it magnetic? Uh, there could be phantoms in here. What is that? I'll explain later. <laughs> Electromagnetic phantom okay. trapped in this copper metal. Mm -hmm. So um, look at the wobble on that. That's crazy. <laughs> it's like it's on an ocean. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Is it just this place, right? What? Uh, some other location just, just would, on be, the... would be good. Yeah, okay. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> now, is is this a vortex pair? We've got one here and another one here. And this is the breaker and this is the maker, I don't know. find out, I guess. I think we're going to have to look at this because I don't think this is illuminated enough.
Yeah, I think I'm going to look at this one, the point sampling, because it, it seems to be getting the beam, and uh, it also looks to be quite clearly defined. Remember this sort of scalloping we saw on the section taken out of the Hutchison knee sample, the iron rich sample. See what we see. So this is a new one. Okay, what do we have? Uh, first up, uh, we will look at the bulk here. Not getting any samples. Damn it. We are not hardly getting any samples, which is a real shame. And um, we're obviously in the complete shadow here. <laughs> Almost no sample whatsoever. <laughs> oh dear. Right, um, so I think we need to kind of see if we can find something similar that is illuminated. It's that copper oxide growth, I believe.
and it's some of the same kind of thing going on here, it's just not quite so clear, but maybe we can get samples from it. Uh, let's see. big are they? Oh, those white ones. Okay, well, um, yeah, so it's not very good focus, I think. And we will change back to the imaging. Okay, that's better. So, stop them getting wibbly wobbling around. So if the theory holds true, like you'd have one which has like mostly copper in it, one uh, or something heavier maybe, and then the other one has carbon in, like this one has carbon in. Interesting to see if we see some lead in here. That would be uh, very very interesting. Um, so let me do a mix here maybe. No. Um, still not great focus, but then it needs to point close. Go and look at that. Maybe I should go. Uh, oh, I'm going to look at that. And we will I'll store that. And we'll go to the image. Yeah, so maybe we have a pair here. Oh, I hope we've got some x-rays hitting these, because this is quite nice. I don't see so much wibble wobble here, so maybe we'll take a shot of that. See, this may be an area where a sub-ball lightning struck it after the main one, because we can see some similar kind of areas but they kind of filled up probably with oxides of copper. Then you kind of need to look at these last minute things that happen. Okay, so I think we're ready to go over into our detection. I think I'll take an SUV there. Just for the sake of it. No, I won't. You can see it there. I'm going to pull it back. A little bit of SUV. I'm interested to see what these bright spots are. Maybe they're just pure copper or see. Right. Let's try again, shall we? Okay, so first up, um, what have we got here? Give us some samples. Oh, that's good. Yes. Yeah, same copper. Yeah, almost entirely copper. Is this just charging or is this actually lead? If it is, that'll be very interesting. Oh, 
almost entirely copper. Okay, so this area probably got some carbon in it, we'll see. No. Yes. So, we have silicon, bottom end, potassium, calcium, of course, mostly carbon and, uh, and oxygen, as the one would expect. Now, the question is, have we gone to the other end of the scale from that, if we go on this spot here? Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's tungsten there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you're going to love this, don't you? You're just going to love it. <laughs> so, copper's very low. Again, there's a lot of oxygen and carbon. 56.7% tungsten. I guess this might be something similar over here. There we go. 61% tungsten, very little copper. <laughs> By weight, of course. It's still mostly carbon and oxygen, of course. <laughs> Little bit of zinc. Zinc was involved in this experiment, so uh, but it was a separate piece of zinc. So um, I'm going to check the periphery of this. You can see that one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a classic shape. This one actually, is, it is kind of six, maybe five. I'm going to check the edges of that. Yeah, the edge is mostly carbon, which is what you kind of see. So I think we might do a map of like this one, and then a map of, again, this is another one here. This is just beautiful. What an absolute honour to be doing this work. <laughs> Shame we couldn't see when it, in that area it was very scalloped. We'll have a, a look around for other options. Yeah, so there's some zinc there. But that was an experiment. No calcium. Okay, we're going to have a look at this. I think we'll probably find that this has got tungsten in it again. Oh, no. Not at the moment. It's a nice piece of copper. Interesting. that's doing that. I'm going to go and change the map with the four minutes on there. Okay. I'm going to do a map. I'm going to make a map of this. That half of it was copper. clear structure, look at that. You've got a hexagon around the outside and uh, your hit in the middle. We'll do seems to be shadowing here. So we're getting light here. I don't think we'll get anything on that, but we might on that one. So I think I will do, I think I will do this one. I think we're not going to get 
can be more of that. There, the oxygen is actually in the pit mostly. There we go, it's in that blob in the pit. And I guess the carbon is too, but I can't see why am I not seeing the carbon? Carbon for some reason is just not showing, even though it's 9.6%. Let's change the colour of that. Yes, so the carbon and oxygen is in that pit area there. It might just be that it's in shadow. Where's the potassium? And the potassium is in the pit as well. How amazing. Look at that. Look at that. Incredible. Look, potassium, carbon, oxygen. They're all in the pit. <laughs> and the tungstens is it trying to be in the center, maybe it was in the center, and just kind of like the dive came off to one side and maybe it was here and you know, span around. But basically your your copper is everywhere else. <laughs> it's all the way around the outside. Less so inside. Okay, so we're not getting illumination over here. Anyway, this is enough to show the principle. Carbon in the pit. Definitely oxygen in the pit, potassium in the pit. So what I'm doing here is, because it's a low concentration, just to show the location, I'm dialing up the intensity of it so that you can see where it, it's located, even though it's a lower amount. Now I've got the carbon and iron are the same colour. It's no good. Yeah, so carbon's definitely in the pit, along with the oxygen. Potassium 100% in the pit. Look at that. And the tungsten in the center. Well, that is a thing. That is quite satisfying. So, where are we in shadow? So, we should be able to see. Maybe we can see that one over there. See this one. Interesting, I see this one here, the circular shape, this actual bit here, which is copper, is just kind of like within this circle. It's 
Okay. And we do a map of that. New area. Let's see what we get. I know we've already mapped that bit, but I'm going to change. That's okay. And map this, this area and this area. I'm going to try that one first. Yeah, this is green. Carbon 40% by atoms. So carbon and oxygen, you know, you can imagine a lot of protons were made. And so you have H, O, and C. H and C make hydrocarbons. Uh, H, C, and O makes carbohydrates. C and O uh, makes plant food. H, two O makes water. It's a really magical thing, this technology. Silicon and oxygen makes rocks, calcium and oxygen makes rocks, potassium and oxygen and iron and all these things make rocks. Starting with copper. Of course there is iron in this experiment as well, directly near to this. And one could argue possibly that the iron contains silicon. Maybe like your carbon, but it's the consistency between different systems of where the carbon and stuff is located into these pits. And so the story is mostly copper is on the outside, the carbon is around the periphery. The oxygen is in the pit. Oh, that's lovely. The potassium is in the pit. Of course, it's not so much, so it's difficult to see. Where's the calcium? It's in the center of the pit. Isn't this a wonderful thing? Is this okay? It's in the pit. <laughs> Has anyone in any doubt what causes his letter? <laughs> Is anyone in any doubt still? It's coherent matter. It is ball, lightning, whatever that is. He's doing it. <clears throat> like I say, there was <clears throat> some zinc in this experiment, so we can expect to see that. But there was no calcium. The calcium is in the structure. The silicon is in the center of the calcium is in the center of the silicon here. And this is interesting because if you remember the ball lightning blowing up on the Vega Valley, um, that had silicon and calcium in it. So, where's the zinc? Can you give me the zinc? There we go, zinc. That seems kind of over. Look at the oxygen here. <laughs> I guess that's reasonably collated. Okay, located the carbon, but yeah. The oxygen really gives this sort of vortical nature to it. So maybe, maybe we'll be able to look at that other one. Probably done on this is enough there. Enough data. One there. So 
some aluminium coming in on this. No, maybe not. Gone. Yeah, a little bit. Where is the aluminium? It's not so sure. <laughs> Not giving it a map yet. I can't see much there. So I think what we'll do is go on that sort of top area and look for um, sort of peripheral effects. Yeah, I'm not getting such clear signal here. Yeah, it's not really catching the light, so uh, I'll call that a day on that one. Not a lot of aim energy there. <laughs> now these look like these pits where we see carbon around the outside. Oh, that isn't quite so clear. Um, they're quite small structures. seen this wave-like circular scallop sections on the sample in the Imperial War Museum from the event. Very interesting. Looks very similar. So you see, it looks like a pair there, a pair here, arranging themselves.
what we're actually looking at here is this section over here we're looking at the top area on here before we were looking at the edge where we saw the scallops and uh, we went down to this tip area here so I'll just do some measurements here and um, that is three and a half or something microns across Six, seven, across the center, one. Okay. We will switch to that and we will switch to fifteen. This one over here is a little bit more intense, isn't it? Six microns, and about six. Is this 1.21? And then this same four, three point three. Let's see what we've got for these things. Um, Interestingly, look, this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is an eight. This is clearly a six. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. So, is this a proper super tube door? Is this some level below? Definitely copper there. Not much else. <laughs> Not a lot of that. So we'll try this little group here, I think. So that's not going to be very interesting. So we'll try another one. Now, if you go and look at the paper in Lafferty, which I talked about a long time ago, first time I talked about it was in Sotry, Seek and Share. They said the number of spots, as they call it, on cathode spots that you get around in a ring, uh, there's a ratio between that and the diameter of the ring. And here we are seeing something that has six around and it's this diameter and this one is looking like it's got eight around and it has that diameter <clears throat> it'd be interesting to see if the ratio in lafferty is mirrored by what we are seeing here of course i've seen in lion two three four five um 
and we've seen six as well. <laughs> Different levels of self-organization. So it would appear in this case the zinc has been caught into these structures. Obviously the oxygen is in there as well. Oxygen gets everywhere. But it's very much in these pits. <laughs> very much. Yeah. Very clear line. Just to confirm that this one with the six was, let's say, three point three, three point five, something like that. And this one with the eight is five point eight four, five point nine. Can we find ones with different numbers? What's this one? Five, I don't know. Well, it's a diamond, diameter anyway. Bit, bit of a mishmash now. Um, hmm. Is that a four? <laughs> Looks pretty square, doesn't it? <laughs> what have we got there? Like four point two seven. But it's kind of like inverted, isn't it? Now we're talking about this in the center here. 2.64. Yeah. Three, maybe. Maybe that's a four sign a good one. Um you'll find any clear fives. Is this a four-sided one? Is this a three-sided one? Three. 2.84, where do we measure it if it's a three-sided? This looks like a three-sided one, actually. I'd say that that's a three-sided one. Let me get a better focus on it. Probably not. Um, no. <laughs> Chances to imaging. Maybe we'll be able to get a, be able to get a better quality. Probably not. <laughs> This is so small. Oh, maybe. Not convinced, but anyway. No, I can see a bit more depth there, isn't it?
there. This really does look like a four-sided. So let's go down here. This is maybe a three-sided, maybe a four-sided. Okay. And we've got our spiral there, I guess. So this is like 3.68, 3.62, so maybe maybe 3.7. And our four-sided here. <laughs> Look at that, it's lovely. Is 3.92. Okay, or do we measure it across here? I measure point to point. 4.98, 4.56, okay. And then where is our five point you up here somewhere? Here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well that's a six point, then we've got a five point, but a six point here. Maybe we need a better focus on that. So, yeah, point to point, is that smaller? 3.6, 3 I think point to point is 3.6, isn't it? And then we have our 6 over here. The question is, are we measuring in the hole or on the outside of the hole? Here now. Well, difficult to tell. <laughs> it was clearer with the higher beam energy. Uh, I don't know. It's definitely bigger. Can we see any or any other songs? So we've got three, four, six. Oh, three, four, six, eight. Looks like a four. <laughs> that looks like a hole. That, de that definitely looks like a four. <laughs> okay. All right. This, this kind of looks like a four. Let's get a metric here for this one. Would it focus better? Not really. Maybe. Better on the higher beam energy. Okay. Um, across the central structure, 2.8. Across the point to point, 3 point, whatever. Within that ballpark. So that is a 4. This looks like a 5. One, two, three, four. I think we've got a five here. Now, where, where do you measure on this one? <laughs> Across there? Across the gap, the hole, on the edges? Can't see a lot in the time, huh? Uh, 
Definitely, sometimes you get a better look at it. With a higher beam. Well, at least get a more contrasty look. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> anyway, I think we've seen three, four, five, six, and eight. That's uh, quite a good quorum, I would say. What's that one? <laughs> Is that a big three? I don't know. It's definitely kind of a regular array, and it might be that the, the big ones have a bigger gap between them, if you know what I mean. I mean, you've got a couple of times where they're sitting on top of each other, but then we've seen this kind of clustering in the line reactor. Side one very clear. Okay. Come out and look at some other areas on it. <laughs> 